Good morning, everyone. Here we are. Some of you have been with us. This is our fifth Building the Infrastructure of America event for our, uh, for, uh, for our country. A Democrats deliver today safe streets and roads for all. A few weeks ago at the Joe Mazzola Training Center where we saw apprenticeships uh, in action, kids learning how to weld uh, so that they could repair and build water systems which were very much a part of the infrastructure legislation, the bipartisan infrastructure framework. Following that, some of us were together at the Trans Bay Terminal where we all came together to salute what was happening in that legislation for transportation in the Bay Area. Five billion dollars to come right here for transit, whether it's electrification, uh, for, for transportation, Caltrain's, or other aspects. Uh, next, we had a town hall, which was uh, participated in by thousands of people from the Bay Area uh, to talk about with Jared Hoffman what was happening in the legislation uh, to save our planet as we improve the quality of life, created jobs, lowered cost in the legislation. And today, we have our fifth event. Uh, this one is a matter of life and death. This one is so important to us, and this one takes place on a day where across America we'll probably add up to about 500 events, including the ones that I mentioned, uh, to, to come to the community, thank people for their ideas, uh, to share with them opportunities that will be there as we build back better. This is an initiative that is the vision of President Joe Biden. President Biden has said, I want to do everything I can in a bipartisan way uh, to build the infrastructure of our country, but I will not confine my vision for the country to that. And so we're working on the BBB, the Build Back Better legislation, uh, to, uh, to be more transformative as we go forward to save the planet, to lower cost for health care, for prescription drugs, lower cost for child care, uh, lower cost in, in every way, lower taxes for the middle class, again, doing so paid for by uh, uh, making people who are wealthy and corporate America to pay their fair share. So that is the context in which all of this is taking place today. So it's an honor to be in San Francisco. We'll be joined shortly by our mayor, and I want to salute her for all of her uh, initiatives. Oh, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mayor, for honoring us with your presence. More importantly, for on, uh, honoring our city with your service and leadership and for the priority you have placed on the safety of the people of San Francisco, which is a very major responsibility for us. Uh, your uh, Vision Zero, a bold plan to end traffic fatalities by 2024, as well as your leadership uh, just last week with a proposal to invest $400 million in muni reliability and street safety. Uh, I salute you for that, and I know you join me in saluting our Bay Area colleagues who are here who are going to be making their presentations. Jody Medeiros, Executive Director of Walk San Francisco. Uh, uh, Janice Lee, Advocate Director for San Francisco Bicycle Coalition. And we'll be hearing by our I know you will agree, our real our, our VIP today is Julie Nicholson, who survived a terrible traffic injury on our streets here in San Francisco, and whose extraordinary courage and resilience inspire us all. And she will be speaking and, as, and representing the voices of so many of those who are here, Families for Safe Streets. Thank you all for being here, uh, for sharing your tragedies, but also giving us your courage to turn your pain into progress and, and help to prevent other families from suffering the agony that you have. And we even have some other survivors of crashes as well. So we'll be hearing from them. Uh, but first, as I gave you, put us in context of what this is a drumbeat across America to make sure this happens. Uh, I'll talk to you now a, a little bit before I then have the privilege of of, uh, of yielding, not only yielding, but praising our mayor once again. Here's what this is about, Madam Mayor and all. Um, the Bay Area has long seen more of its fair share of heartbreaking traffic deaths. You all are here as eloquent testimony to that. 
While COVID thinned traffic considerably, remember that it was thin, we saw 462 traffic fatalities in 2020, just 30 fewer than 2019. Less traffic, just 30 fewer fatalities. Nationally, last year marked the most traffic deaths since 2007, and fatalities have been sharply on the rise for a decade. These incidents are more than just statistics, as we know. They are families shattered by the tragedy, communities in mourning, and a demand for urgent action. That is why our historic bipartisan infrastructure law, Democrats are advancing the promise of safe streets and roads from all, for all. We secured $14 billion nationally for roadway safety, which will help make California's streets safer and friendlier. $262 million from the Highway Safety Pro uh, Improvement Program is headed to California this year to help reduce fatalities and injuries on our roads. This will help design complete streets which provide safe and accessible transport options for people of all ages and abilities. With the new $5 billion Safe Streets for All initiatives, our city can compete for funding uh, for zero, Vision Zero, Madam Mayor, particularly for our high injury network, just 13%, just 13 of roads account for 75% of severe and fatal accidents. With new funding to modernize our data collection, we'll get a clearer picture of where and how our crashes occur and with $7.2 billion for transportation alternatives nationally, we'll improve safety of sidewalks, bike lanes, get that up there in terms of what it means for bike lanes and curbs. So I just want to see if I can get this up here. Introducing uh, Julie Nicholson, uh, but Julie, uh, instead we're just our distinguished mayor, and we thank her for making safety a priority for the Ameri for the people of San Francisco. Whether it's safety on the streets, safety in terms of their health care, safety in terms of diminishing drug use, and more people have died of drug use and COVID here. I mean, and, and the mayor is taking the bull by the horns with that as well as fighting retail uh, uh, crimes and all. Safety is the first responsibility of government. It's what the oath we take to protect and defend, whether it's the Constitution or the people. Our mayor has been a champion in living up to that important priority for the community, for the people, for the children. Our mayor, London Breed. Thank you so much uh, for being here today and for always taking care of not just the city that you represent and love, but also this entire country. Uh, we appreciate both large and small things that you continue to do to pay very close attention to the challenges that continue to persist. And thank you so much, Julie, for allowing me the opportunity um, uh, to speak at this time uh, because I want to be clear about what San Francisco plans to continue to do. Um, this vision of making sure that we have zero fatalities on our streets as a result of the high injury corridor networks is very important. And part of the importance is not just a plan that was developed by a number of people that you see here today, including Ju uh, Jody from Walk SF and others, it was really about a demand from, from the people of San Francisco to see change, to see change in these particular areas. So many collisions that could be avoided. This city many, many years ago uh, really focused on building for speed, for access from the west side of town to the east side of town. Homes were bulldozed in my community of the Fillmore to make way for Gary Boulevard, which is in essence 
a freeway in the middle of our city. And we have had to make some significant changes. And as Speaker Pelosi has said, 13% of the locations that are the high injury network represent 75% of the number of collisions that have occurred in the street causing major injury and death. This infrastructure bill is so important because here in San Francisco, we are so very fortunate that the people of this city care about making improvements to our city. And just last week, I introduced the transportation and safety bond that's going to help to continue great work that we're doing like high injury corridors here on 2nd and Folsom and other places throughout San Francisco. And we will aggressively continue the work. But local dollars alone are not enough. And we need help. And this infrastructure bill will not only help San Francisco, it will help this entire country so that we can improve safety on our streets, especially in major dense cities like San Francisco, where you've seen a significant increase in the number of people who are walking and biking. And I'm really proud that this city has taken steps since I've been mayor to produce 20 new miles of protected bike lanes, as well as daylighting and changes to our lights so that we prioritize safety over speed, so that we change how people move around the city, so people know exactly where they belong on the streets when we're trying to get people from point A to point B. And as Madam Speaker put it, our responsibility as leaders is to keep people safe. And part of keeping people safe is making investments. And sometimes those changes and the removal of parking and other things make people upset or uncomfortable. But at the end of the day, if it's gonna save someone's life, it's a small sacrifice to make. And so I'm grateful to be here with our speaker who's been an extraordinary leader with Walk SF and the Bicycle Coalition and so many advocates who have been impacted by tragedy. Tragedy where they've lost loved ones, where sadly they've experienced it personally themselves. And my hope is that we don't continue to go down this path. And that's why these investments and the work that we need to do in San Francisco is so important. And so at this time, I'd like to yield the floor back to our special guest, Julie. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mayor Breed and Madam Speaker. What an incredible honor it is to be here today. I'm Julie Nicholson. I'm a member of the Families for Safe Streets community. You can see behind me. I'm also a professor of early childhood and I'm a mother of three wonderful girls. Almost two years ago, January 4th, 2020, I was out doing my favorite form of self-care. I was jogging in the panhandle. I was celebrating getting to the end of my husband's final chemo treatment when a driver who was speeding ran through a red light, ricocheted off of a car making an illegal left turn, came into the park and hit me, throwing me 20 feet and leaving me with a broken back and broken neck. It took me eight months of therapy and healing but here I am. I'm fortunate. Thank you. Going through that experience really opened my eyes to the preventable health crisis of traffic violence. This is a preventable health crisis that is getting worse, not better. It's a preventable health crisis that impacts not just me, but all of us. And here's the thing that's amazing. It's a preventable health crisis that has proven solutions. I'm standing up here feeling so thankful, so grateful, and overwhelmed as a traffic survivor, violent survivor. And I also feel so grateful, so grateful to our federal leaders for the infrastructure bill that is going to bring attention and action to bring safer streets. We have trauma all across this country from those who are being hurt by traffic violence, but I'm here to say thank you to Madam Speaker, 
to Representative Desaulnier. On behalf of Families for Safe Streets and our community, I want to say thank you for the infrastructure bill, for the action you're taking to make our streets safer. It means so much to me. It means so much to all of us. Thank you. Thank you so much. That, I mean, it says so much when we talk about what Julie described, <laughs> the eloquence of your statement and speaking for families for safe streets, this, the tragedy that they underwent. And one of them said to me, um, this isn't about an accident. Some of this is a decision on the part of somebody to run a red light and speed and the rest of that. So we have to be prepared in every possible way. And yes, sometimes it's an accident, but not always. And a person who knows that very well uh, is um, uh, Jeffrey Tumlin, who's the director of San Francisco Municipal Transportation Area. Thank yeah. you so much. For Jeffrey. Thank you, Jeffrey. Let's hear for Jeffrey for <laughs> keeping uh, San Francisco moving and in a way that is safe for bikelists, pedestrians, for uh, uh, people in cars and the rest. And during the Q&A, he'll take all the hard questions <laughs> because he tells us a beautiful story about what's happening at Second and Bolson. But now it's my honor to introduce Representative Des Desaulnier, who is a member of the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee of the, of the Congress of the United States. He brought to that committee his experience as a local official, as a member of the state legislature. This is this is if, so in any case, Mark, Des Mark Desaulnier. Mark Desaulnier. I hope he's not one of my constituents. <laughs> I, I just, I really want to thank all of you for being here. Um, I want to thank the speaker for her tenacity and vision, as I did the last one I was able to attend. I want to thank the mayor um, for her vision and tenacity in a very, very difficult uh, position, but um, she's inspiring as is the speaker. And Julie, thank you so much for your career your vocation and your heartfelt story about your experience and to all of you, as, as the speaker said, um, through your experiencing, you're helping save lives. And I, I do want to uh, thank somebody who, uh, as a staff person who helped mentor me this, probably won't appreciate me calling her out, but Kate Breen, she's shaking her head. Uh, <laughs> but we used to serve together, uh, together. Uh, when I was an MTC commissioner, and she was a wonderful staff person, and now she uh, is working with San Francisco to make sure these projects are done. So this is really a vision, uh, and it's time, as the mayor said, and as the speaker has done so um, with her usual tenacity, for the federal government to re-engage in this infrastructure, to re-engage in a way that we historically did uh, when I started in transportation longer than I would like to admit where the federal government, the, met, the model was almost 75% from the federal government, 25% local and state. And here in San Francisco in the region, representing an East Bay district and representing Contra Costa County, where we have, we have passed super majority self-help sales tax to invest, where the state has done that, where the mayor just mentioned she's doing it again. So now the federal government is back, thanks to our leadership. And this whole systems management not only will save lives, but will help everyone's quality of life. For every single occupancy vehicle that you take off the road and put somebody on a bike or walking, it saves the environment. It's a multiplier of 10 on climate traditional pollutants, and it creates safety, and it reduces congestion. To my constituents in the suburbs, when they ask me about this, I say every time we take one of us out of a car, and put them on transit and bikes like Copenhagen and Amsterdam and Munich, uh, where 50% of the peak trips are by bike, we start to reduce congestion, along with telecommuting and tele errands. But this is how we address our transportation challenges here in the Bay Area. And what happens in the Bay Area and what happens in California, as Jimmy Carter said, happens in the rest of the United States. So what we're doing here today, not just saves lives here, not just saves lives in the region, not just saves lives in California, 
will save lives all over the United States. So thank you so much for your vision, your tenacity, and your heartfelt advocacy. We always say on these uh, infrastructure and transportation issues, there are health issues, clean air for our children. There are safety issues in terms of what we're talking about here today. There are jobs issues and the jobs that are created to do all of this. Uh, they are, again, they are a quality of life issue by getting more cars off the roads and more people safely uh, making their own choices about walking or bicycling and the rest. So, so much is served by all of this. And here to talk about Walk San Francisco, it's Executive Director Jody Medeiros. I referenced her in my remarks. I want to salute her leadership and all that she worked, all who she works in Walk San Francisco. Jody Medeiros. Good morning, everybody. My name is Jody Medeiros, and I'm the Executive Director of Walk San Francisco. Before I begin, I do want to take a moment of silence for the 25 people we have lost this year alone in San Francisco to traffic violence. In the past month, we lost Dharam Qatar. He moved to San Francisco in 2011 to be closer to his grandkids and made this city his home. He loved walking. He was walking home after working the night, <clears throat> night shift as a security guard and was hit and killed in the Bayview neighborhood. We also lost Andrew Zeman. Andrew was a paraprofessional who worked at the elementary school that he attended as a child. The school kids used to call him Mr. Andrew. He was hit and killed right outside of the school on November 10th. He was only 30 years old. And only one block from here, where we stand, Antonia Durano was hit and killed in April this year. Antonia, like so many others, was simply trying to cross the street. Standing with me today, as you have all heard from Julie and so many of the members of San Francisco Bay Area Families for Safe Streets, these are people who have suffered incomprehensible loss of a child from traffic crashes. Steve, Gina, and Joe, we're here for you today. Others standing with me, Supervisor Yi, Julie, Nancy, John Alex, they've survived being severely injured in a crash. Survivors have lost careers, their independence and mobility from traffic crashes. And these brave people are here because they don't want anyone else to suffer the way that they have. And I stand with them to demand that the changes to our streets prevent more tragedies. Mayor Breed, we are very lucky, has been standing with us as well on these issues and has been a true visionary for safe streets. And it is deeply meaningful for us today to be here in San Francisco with Madam Speaker, as well as Representative DeSonye. Thank you for being here. Because for so long, federal policy and federal dollars have been focused around making its easy for cars to get around and the speed of vehicles has been the priority but this bill does change that the thing that I think about is what if every day a mid-size airplane fell from the sky that is the equivalent of what we are encountering right now in our country and it's spread over countless towns and cities and people and communities are suffering from unsafe streets. This new infrastructure bill is a turning point for truly facing the crisis we have in our cities. And we're sending a very clear message that the country's approach to traffic safety must change because crashes are preventable. And it's backing it up with proven solutions and funding so we can change this. Vision Zero and Complete Streets projects work. We know that from countless cities across the country who are making those changes, and here we are doing that right here in San Francisco. Walk San Francisco along with our advocates, San Francisco Bicycle Coalition, Families for Safe Streets, together with our city's mayor, London Breed, and our city's agencies, are pushing hard to make San Francisco the beacon for other cities. We're really trying to show what we can do when safety 
is the number one priority. And trying to cross the street is no longer a life or death situation. This infrastructure bill is focused on safety. That is incredible. This might be the first time in our city's history that a federal agency is thinking about safety first. And as Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg said, we cannot and should not accept these fatalities as simply a part of everyday life in America. At Walk San Francisco, we don't, and we don't want you to either. Thank you again, Speaker Pelosi and Representative uh, Sonia for standing with us today, M Madam Mayor Breed, for taking real action, fundamentally change this country's approach to traffic safety. Thank you so much. hear from Janice Lee, an advocacy director of San Francisco Bicycle Coalition. Thank you for being with us, Janice. Good morning. My name is Janice Lee, and I'm proud to be here representing the San Francisco Bicycle Coalition today. I want to extend my deep gratitude to uh, Madame Speaker and Representative Desaunier uh, for your tireless leadership in D.C. fighting for equity for Bay Area residents. That's right, the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act means equity for San Franciscans right here in the south of Market. It means equity because this infrastructure bill is going to bring much needed investments um, to streets that have been historically designed to be dangerous. Just, just take a look at where we are right here, where we're standing. Folsom and Howard Streets were never designed with people biking, walking, or taking transit in mind. Previously, these were de facto highways cutting through one of San Francisco's densest neighborhoods, and the results were deadly. Amelie de Mulac, Tess Rothstein, Russell Franklin, Kate Slattery, Harold Swaggart. The names of bicyclists hit and killed while biking on these two streets won't stop until investments are made. And of course, as Jody mentioned, I cannot forget Antonio Durano, the 78-year-old senior who was crossing the street at Folsom and Third just a block away from here this past April. Mr. Durano was hit and killed by a speeding driver just around the corner from the senior affordable housing he lived in. He was a well-known and beloved member in the Filipino community. It's people like Mr. Durano whose lives are cut short when we don't have the funds to upgrade our infrastructure to the modern day. This needs to stop, and we need to fund shovel-ready projects now to bring equitable investments to save lives on our streets. Thanks to state and federal funding, we're seeing some of the fruits of their early implementation here, but Folsom and Howard Streets are soon going to be overhauled with new bus boarding islands and transit priority, uh, transit priority traffic signals, better lighting, and safer intersections for pedestrians, and a protected two-way bike lane for the hundreds and hundreds of people biking here every day. Lastly, I want to say thank you to you, Mayor Reed. Um, you mentioned this. We are celebrating protected bike lanes on this section of Folsom and Howard, um, early because of your visionary leadership to push the city to build 20 miles of protected bike lanes in just two years. And thanks to Jeffrey Tumlin and the leadership at SFMTA, the city actually achieved that earlier this year. So in closing, on behalf of the San Francisco Bicycle Coalition, we want to thank our congressional delegation for prioritizing street safety here today because truly our lives depend on it. Thank you. Thank you, Janice, very much. Thank you for acknowledging Norman. Uh, thank you for being with us. I didn't recognize you. Thank you for being with us. The, uh, one of the points of, of the many fine points that Mayor made was about highways coming through areas and the rest, roads coming through areas, dividing communities. I think it's really important to yes. salute President Biden for making equity, fairness, justice in construction so much a part of what he is doing. Not to divide neighborhoods, but to unite them, to undo some past, to undo some past injustices of dividing neighborhoods and the rest. So this justice piece of it, it's like a 40% justice uh, initiative within the uh, all of his initiatives about I'd like to start on this subject. On this subject. On Build Back Better, yeah. <coughs> um, how is there any hope at this uh, time, Madam Speaker, uh, now that the Senator is getting this through the Senate, now that Senator Manson has said he's a definite no vote? Well, we never give up. And I wrote a letter to my colleagues yesterday 
uh, saying, first and foremost, we will, we will continue to fight to pass the legislation. The Democratic leader of the Senate, Chuck Schumer, wrote a similar letter uh, to his colleagues yesterday. This, is, this will happen, it must happen, and we will do it as soon as we can. Uh, there are uh, conversations that are ongoing, but we cannot walk away from this commitment. The Build Back Better is about transforming our society. Build Back Better with women in the workplace. Build Back Better with workforce development for young people, newer people uh, reaching into our communities with all the diversity that is there. We will not let this opportunity pass, and we will uh, make that case. And I have confidence that Senator Manchin cares about our country and that at some point, very soon, we can take up the legislation. I'm not deterred at all. Anybody want to add to that? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but back to here, I, I, I think it would be very interesting just to, uh, to hear Jeffrey just tell us what, just hear some of what you told us on the tour because he made one point that was very interesting. I never thought of but Mr. Desaunier um, uh, endorsed, which is when you're building these kinds of changes for safety in neighborhoods, it's much more worker-centric than big machinery-centric. Jeffrey? Thank you, Speaker. Jeffrey Tumlin, director of the SFMTA. Um, as the speaker said, when we do work for safe streets, uh, like building protected bikeways and upgrading traffic signals and uh, other Vision Zero work, the creation of jobs factor is so much greater than big highway expansion projects where you're mostly buying big machinery and lots of concrete and steel. Every single dollar spent on Vision Zero projects like this goes to creating skilled labor jobs, something that we're very proud of. Um, and that we have um, hundreds of here at the SFMTA. A lot of this work we can do in-house, and a lot more of it we can, uh, we can spend on local contractors um, and disadvantaged business enterprises um, to really have the money spent in a way that develops community and creates more skilled jobs. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, enlightenment, but also for your leadership. Any other questions on this subject of what we're doing here today? Any other questions? Well, thank you all very much for coming. Let me once again salute the mayor for being a leader on this, because the model, uh, the initiatives that are here in San Francisco serve as a model to the nation. How uh, uh, the mayor talked about listening to the community as to what they thought would work very well. So your voice is the mayor's intercession, the initiatives that are here turn into public policy at the national level, benefit not just San Francisco, but the entire country. So I thank all of you for being here, to Kyle's mom, to Paul's dad, to all of you who've suffered through any of this. Thank you for your, uh, again, your generosity of spirit to share your stories so eloquent so that other people will not have to suffer. With that, again, congratulations, Mayor, on your successes here. Thank you all very much for coming. Let's get forward now to build back better for the people. Thank you all very much.